Hello everyone and welcome back to Protect and Persevere. So today's video we're going to be delving into the GPR or the Recce rifle, the do it all rifle, the Jack and Wolf Trades rifle, um, whatever coin phrase or term you want to use to describe just the general purpose rifle for the armed prepared citizen. Um, I'll be going into what that usually describes and entails, um, my version and kind of take on it, and why you want to incorporate one as just an average Joe trying to protect his family and his community. So before I hop in, I'd like to give credit to Barrel and Hatchet's uh, video, uh, all the Brass Facts videos, um, Heck, you Bear Independent. There's a huge long list of people who have already kind of delved into the subject and gave me a lot of pointers and kind of ideas and how I want to go with mine. So going into it, what is a GPR? Man, I already hate acronyms already. But usually the first thing that comes to mind is it is between a 13 inch and 16 inch barrel length. Um, anything shorter than that, like a 10.5 to 12.5, you're not only you're in kind of a legal gray area right now because of all the gay TF stuff, but also you're losing a lot of velocity already. And I just feel like that's, you know, typically that's too short of a barrel. Um, anything greater than 16 inch, like your 18 inch and 20 inch, you're kind of in that whole... SPR or special purpose receiver rifle area where just it's a little bit too long too long range oriented for all intents and purposes um, next thing is usually at least in my opinion it needs to have some form of magnification whether it's a red dot with a magnifier <coughs> an ACOG yeah, there you, go. Get your you know with maybe a piggyback red dot or an offset maybe one of the 3x micro prisms uh, Usually a LPVO, low power variable optic. Um, sometimes you'll see two to tens, but basically just it has to have some form of magnification in my opinion. I think it also needs a white light of some sort. Um, obviously it needs a sling because you need to, you know, if you need to go walk around a field with it or something, you need to be able to sling it. Yeah, um, I, I think an IR stand. laser or unit is optional, and I think a suppressor is optional. Obviously if you have it, why not use it? You know, mission dick takes dictates um and mainly the things i want to go into is you need the ability to shoot effectively from you know up close and far away you know some people say zero to 300 yards or zero to 500 i think there's a million different variables that goes into that but mainly just be able to shoot effectively up close and at range um i think you also need the ability to shoot both during the day and at night like i said with either ir or passive aiming via some form of red dot um, it needs to have a good balance of kind of lightweight parts and, you know, build, and but also be robust and durable. And I think it needs to also be accurate, but you do not overemphasize any one trait to kind of counter all the other ones. It needs a good balance. But lastly, and here's a big one, maximizes the user the user's own potential skills in his own area of operation. But at the end of the day, those are all just my opinions. Um, you can do whatever you want and call it your GPR. That's just my own take on it. And now I'll kind of hop into my general purpose rifle. There's some light coming out that buster. There is? Yeah. That's cool. All right, so hopping into the rifle itself, uh, this is a factory, at its very base is a factory, Sons of Liberty Gunworks uh, 13.7, uh, and it is pin and welded. But they're knocked, so it is a uh, you know legal 16 inch overall length rifle because of all the gay ATF stuff. But um, yeah, and a lot of the terminals is still just what it came with, so I'm not gonna dive into that much. Um, if you want to look it up, um, they made good stuff. But yeah, so at its base, it's a factory uh, Sons of Liberty gun. So uh, going from back to front, at the very back, I'm just running the B5 shot mod stock that it came with. 
I'm a big fan of these Sop Mod stocks just because of the little flare of the cheek weld. Even if it's just a little bit like this, I think it really helps getting a good eye, a comfortable eye, uh, whatever you call it. But yeah, it's pretty nice. Um, going forward from that, um, I'm still running their standard charging handle. Haven't had any problems with that. Um, I swapped the grip from the standard B5 one to a BCM one. Um, I just like the feel of this one better. It just, uh, it's a lot more thinner than the other one is. And um, I guess uh, going up to the optics package that I'm running. So I'm running a primary arms one to eight low power variable optic. And this is a second focal plane. So it's just the regular, uh, and it's the regular uh, SOX line. So it's more of the budget friendly line. Um, is it the best scope? Um, no, has it got the best glass? No, but for all intents and purposes, it works. Um, I might upgrade in the future, but I'll talk more on that later. And I'm running that on an American Defense Manufacturing QD mount. So I can, you know, occasionally I'll take this off and just put a red dot on it. But um, it's not super, you know, necessary to have a QD mount for this. Um, it's just I found it on sale. Now at the 12 o'clock, I'm actually running a Hollow Sun 407C. It's just the regular dot only model, and I'm running that on its own uh, Reptilla mount. I forgot what it's called. It's called like the SAR 90 mount. So it's it's separate from the ADM mount. But um, yeah, it's pretty pretty cool. If you ever the moment you go from just a standard one to eight. Or one to six to putting a dot on top or even on the side it's pretty game changing uh, I'll talk more about the optics package later but uh so going down I'm running first off I got these little grip panels from BCM personally uh, I like the concept they just they kind of pop off every once in a while because there's not really anything bolting them but it's whatever um, I'm running their BCM grip um, I really like this grip I thought about you know chopping it but honestly it's kind of nice even if it's just like you know, putting against a tree, being able to grab the whole grip or whatever, but I tend to run, you know, a normal C clamp or whatever. But it's nice to have. And at the very least, it gives me an indexing point to my pressure pad, and I can still get into the light. But I'm running a Arasaka, Arasaka Body 600 series with, uh, I'm actually, I was running just a standard Malkoff head, but now I'm running the Surefire 2 cell KMC2 head. It's one, it has white light, IR light, and offsetting. And then I have the 100 Concepts uh, light cap on there. Um, really like this light. Um, just for the, it, the redundancy of having IR light, because I don't always have this laser unit, which I'll get into. But uh, And just the white light itself is a pretty good throw. Um, I think Hoplophile went into how it even outperforms some of the other heads. But, uh, and I'm running that on a Surefire DS-07, I believe. It's the one with the redundant uh, pressure pad that, you know, if this cable fails, I have, you know, uh, both constant and momentary from this right here. And it's waterproof and it's everything. Um, currently, I'm running this Mod Button Light, which I'm on, so I'm about to replace it and sell it. Just because it, it technically works, it's just very wishy-washy. Sometimes it's not full beam. Like right now, it's only like half of it does the full power. So yeah, I'm just not a big fan of it. I should just go. I'm probably just gonna go with the standard Surefire pad. But yeah. Now on um, top of the rail, I'm running a Hollow Sun LS321, and it's the one that has it's got IR Illuminator. IR laser, uh, viz laser for zeroing, and uh, yeah, it's got those three modes. Um, it's honestly, it's really, you know, it's really fast running a laser with a co-aligned illuminator, but honestly, I have found that the vampire light actually puts out way more lumens than this. Now, is it as intuitive shooting, you know, with the laser and uh, illuminator focused together? Not really, but just from a power standpoint. Now, I like this laser unit, but honestly, this gun is more like I've been talking about a general purpose rifle. That a lot of times, if I know I'm going to be doing, you know, nighttime stuff, 
this will go on a different gun that's more focused for night vision shooting and I primarily run it just like this so and that comes back to the versatility of this vampire head where it's like you know from a home defense standpoint I have you know I have white light I can access and then you know if I'm out just hog hunting or you know looking for you know varmints and whatnot I have a vampire head that with this red dot on top I can actually have pretty good both passive and I guess active ish um, shooting with just this red dot and the vampire light and it keeps the front pretty lightweight because um, going back to this grip you almost have to run this grip with a you know this two cell flashlight if you're gonna choose to run your IR laser unit and then running a full-size can which I might as well hop into it this is a and the reason I went with 13.7 at least at the beginning was that I wanted to run a full-size uh, Dead Air Salmon S. It's the only can I have. Um, is it the best can? Uh, no, um, you know, no and yes. You know, people debate, you know, and there's always a new can on the market, but it's a decent all-around can. It can be pretty reliable, but uh, and it has a great sound, you know, signature, at least in my opinion. But, uh, but what I was getting at is just having, you know, all this stuff at the front it is a very front-heavy gun. So that's why, you know, even having this 1x8 at the back, it actually, um, I've been a big proponent of, it doesn't really matter how much it weighs in total, it matters how much does it balance. You know, it could be really, you know, lightweight or whatnot, but if you have something heavy at the front or heavy at the back, it doesn't, you know, balance that well. So a lot of times, you know, especially with, if I'm going to put, you know, this laser up here, this grip helps balance out how front heavy it is. But honestly, a lot of times I'll just run it like this, especially in the field where, you know, I might be walking around mainly in the daytime. So, it, you know, having extra weight at the front just kind of makes it a hassle. And I can always take the can off, you know, run a red dot or just run it, you know, my standard, you know, one to eight without the can on. And I have a very compact package, but I still have, you know, a lot of uh, capability of shooting at range with this. Now, um, there's a couple things I might do in the future, mainly just the optics package. But, uh, so, you know, this ain't the best scope in the world. Um, if anything, I thought about two different, you know, paths I could take. One, I could just get another 1-8 and 1-6, which is just way better glass, you know. Maybe one of their GOX lines or whatever, just, just a little bit more clarity and whatnot. That, or I was thinking about potentially going to a 2-10, to 10 like in the barrel and hatchet video just and that would also have better glass too just because this is a very usable scope and from a kind of grid down you know long term scenario having a second focal plane oh and i might show the footage of the release pop up the reticle having a very usable reticle on 1x all the way to 8x without needing any illumination you know that's always there and it's edged you know it's pretty nice to have However, that being said, since it is so, you know, noticeable and big, um, I've, you know, been taking some longer range shots where I just feel like the image is too big and I cover up some of what I'm looking at. And then, uh, besides that, also just the red dot on top, you know, this ain't, this is definitely not the most durable, you know, piggyback red dot. And at the very least, I want to go to a closed emitter optic, you know, so just like I might put a closed emitter optic on my handgun, I'm, I might put a closed emitter up here too, just so... Um, you're getting a little bit more durability out of the top mount. And then also, think, thinking about it a lot, honestly, just running a standard 16-inch versus 13.7, um, it looks really cool having it sit flush like that, and it makes it a little bit more lighter, but honestly, having a little bit more velocity, I, I'd rather take that trade off. I'll make that deal. How about you, you bitch? You make that deal? I'd make that deal. I don't blame you. Damn good deal. But yeah, so that is the rifle. Quickly throw in that I actually don't typically run this gun with the bipod attached. It's just a little cutie bipod setup um, that I set up that mainly just for zeroing, you know, making sure, you know, the gun's, you know, still squared away and I'm propping it up, you know, for stuff like this. But yeah, I typically don't run a bipod on this, but it is an option. So now that I've gone over my GPR and everything, and I kind of want to talk about why would you want to go with a GPR 
and what are some other options uh, instead of uh, making a kind of general purpose rifle. And so, uh, Dirty Civilian, uh, the YouTube channel and Instagram page, they actually did just put up their video on purpose-built rifles. And uh, it's not a new concept, but uh, one thing I want to talk about is, uh, I guess I'll talk about some reasons why you would want a GPR before. So, first off, a GPR um, for the modern, you know, armed paired citizen is that we don't really know what situations we could get into. We're not some, you know, high you know tier operator that has you know funding and support behind them that you know they have support elements and this and that and they have all this stuff to where they can highly uh nail down what they need for certain missions and stuff like that versus work you know just the average joe you're just you don't know it could be home defense it could go to hunting you could um or you're in a situation where you don't really know what's happening. So it's having something that's just kind of a general, decent at everything, or I guess what I'm com coming at is that a GPR is kind of just a do it all to a sense, even though that's, yeah, there's not really a thing as that. Um, another reason you'd maybe want a GPR is because uh, for patrolling, uh, a general purpose kind of that length and everything in that size, it does everything decently well. It's not super crazy like heavy especially like with this I just have a white light on there um it's a pretty good patrol rifle you know not a lot of stuff going on it's pretty lightweight um and honestly like, I'm like uh one thing is that not a lot of people have a lot of money to be buying like oh this is my mark 18 or my you know SPR and stuff like that maybe they legit just have one rifle and for a lot of people it's just going to be a 16 inch rifle um like I was saying, 13 inch to 16 inch is a pretty good all around length. And a lot of people, they just have their 16 inch rifle and, you know, all the different, you know, acronyms out there. And I swear I'm going to stop, you know, using acronyms or whatever. But it might just legit be that's the only rifle they have. And this, uh, going with something like this, you could maximize the one thing you have. But um, there are drawbacks. Um, not only, like I mentioned before, weight and length, is that the, mo the moment you try to, like, make something so super ultra versatile and jack of all trades is you're never really super good at one specific thing so if you do have one specific thing you need to do you might be better off going with that route like i was saying people you know brass facts dirty civilian hoplophile all of these guys great channels uh risky Krisky, all of them you know they have really dedicated stuff for certain things so for instance home defense gun a 16 inch, you know, or 13, seven, whatever, even with the can or without the can, maybe having something shorter, maybe a 300 blackout or, a, you know, something like a 10 inch 5.56 gun, that would be, you know, a little bit easier to move around in your home with. Or um, also in vehicles, you know, this is not too bad of a length, but honestly, a 16 inch gun in a car is a lot harder to move around with than a shorter gun. You know, and like I said before, night vision, you know, oriented stuff. Uh, yeah, so that would be one thing you might want to specialize in. And then the other thing is, you know, 13.7 and 16 inch, mainly 13.7 is that you're still losing a lot of the velocity that 5.56 five, needs. Like, because um, when 5.56 five, came out, it was a 20 inch rifle. So 13.7, you're losing a lot of velocity. Even 16 inch, you're losing velocity. Now, I still think 16 inch is a good length because you're still pretty getting pretty good velocity but a lot of people are moving towards the SPR these days and you know maybe one of these days I'll go that route but that and maybe having something more long range and precision for you know especially depending on what area you live in might be nice to have so having you know like a shorter gun for home defense and stuff like that and and I say shorter guns but 10 fives can still shoot out shoot out pretty far it's mainly just ballistics and drop and stuff like that just like this 13.7 can probably shoot farther than I currently you know am skilled at um, but yeah having a longer range gun might be something nice to have so the reason I want to talk about GPR is just that I'm not you know and maybe one of these days I'll probably will go that specialized route and have like maybe a gun for a certain thing but the reason I want to talk about the GPR and why I'm so fond of it is that it's just like I said the armed prepared citizen you're probably only gonna have one rifle and if you do have more than one you can only have one at one time 
you don't know what you're getting into and I think something like this should be at the very least maybe the first rifle you kind of get into because it just covers so many of your bases also wanted to throw in all these you know fancy acronyms different loadouts um, all this different crazy stuff none of it really matters if you don't really know what you're doing or at least are somewhat you know skilled and trained ass the main thing is just whatever you decide to go with if it's your freaking you know just run-of-the-mill AR is just get good with it you know understand your zeros your holdovers all of that so at the end of the day no matter what it is if you're good with what you have there's no reason to feel bad about that or you know I think there's always room for improvement but that's the main thing is just you know you being you know healthy and fit and then you knowing how to handle what you have but yeah I just want to throw that in there and, but yeah I think Something like this will never really die. It's a pretty all-around good setup. Um, leave your comments below what you think. What are your thoughts on stuff like this? And uh, stay safe out there, and uh, God bless.